Hi friends and welcome to the next video. It's real late at night, uh, jazz hours o'clock, <laughs> and I'm here with another video for you. And this video is going to be 10 things your mentor should have told you. Now I've noticed that there's a lot of guys out there without mentors. So this is something that's been coming up over and over again, especially you know, on the lesson side, I'm hearing about guys that uh, didn't have uh, teachers and mentors for a long time. And then they, they come onto the lesson site and uh, they're not used to having somebody help them. And, and what, I've, what I've noticed also is not that they're recalcitrant at all, but they're, they're just like in shock that there's somebody helping them, you know, and all these little details and things. <laughs> so, you know, it's a great kind of sadness for me that uh, somebody would go at it alone for too long or so long when in real, you know in reality that's such a gargantuan waste of time to not have information and the correct input all the time so uh, not only for your drumming but for your personal life it's important to get a mentor now these are 10 things that some of my mentors told me as I was growing up and drumming okay so, in no particular order, the first one, stay away from drugs. Stay away from alcohol. I've seen that shit ruin more careers than I care to remember. I mean, what is it about that world that attracts someone? I think, obviously, you have to have, you know, a personality that's kind of open to suggestible to that type of a life but man I've seen some great players go down down man and it takes years to recover years of their lives wasted in recovery programs and some even passed away you know guys that I know I knew all right so that's the number one thing I mean, always stay healthy stay away from drinking stay away from drugs okay I know in the music industry that's sometimes really hard now the guys that are completely pro and the top players I mean, it's very rare that they're they're hooked into that but you know some of them unfortunately have been and, and you know in jazz history obviously it's been a problem not as much of a problem in jazz nowadays I would say it's more maybe in the entertainment area of music that there's a lot of drugs but if you're you're a player and you get hired to do these types of gigs, man. Just stay away from that whole scene, please. Okay? Don't waste your time and your life on that stuff. Okay. Number two, as I said, in no particular order, show up early. All right? If you have a gig, don't mess around. Show up early. Show up an hour early, two hours early, whatever it is. I had a friend of mine that would show up like five hours early. He would you know, get to a place, make sure he was close by if it was far away, two hour drive or whatever. He'd make sure he was there like five hours before to eat something, hang out a bit and relax, open his car, do put the drums in, really relax in case there was ever anything to go wrong with his car or something happened. He would give himself a five hour <laughs> a head start, you know. I mean, I think maybe maybe that's a little bit too paranoid, but hey. You know, uh, I, I think it's a great idea, actually. If you're going to do a job, do it right. Don't take any chances, especially if it's a long drive day. Okay, number three, protect your name. Now, the main thing that this mentor of mine told me when, when it came to this was protect your name means don't put anything out there that's not ready to be put out. Don't let people see you playing a certain thing when you're not ready to present it, okay? It's like any artist. If a work is not ready to be presented, don't present it. Don't be hasty. Don't put it out there before it's time and let people see you playing something in a mediocre way. That gets you nowhere. Now, obviously these days, it seems that no talent is the new talent. <laughs> you know? But um, I think in the long run, if you want to have a nice relationship with music and drumming and your colleagues and you want to have a good name don't put stuff out there before it's time protect your name protect, protect your musical reputation and that's something that's very important 
very, very important. I feel like that's gone by the wayside now. This is unbelievable to me. Anyway, uh, next one. Always show up prepared. If you have a gig that requires you to learn music, you got to learn 20 new songs, okay? Don't show up to the gig unprepared. You know, a lot of times what I used to do, man, it's such a bummer that most people, you know, a lot of times if, if it's money gigs, they'll just give you a list of songs and learn all these songs. You know, they won't give you the charts. In, in profession, professional situations, there's always charts, you know, but a lot of times there's no charts, you know, and you have to show up and you have to make all the charts yourself and listen to the songs and memorize them. Uh, uh, in those types of situations, I don't even take those gigs anymore. If somebody tells me, learn 50 songs, there's no charts and they hand me a CD or a bunch of MP3s, I said, man, I, I don't have time for this, sorry. <laughs> okay, that's not professional. If there's charts and everything is prepared and or if it's paying like really well, that's another story if it's a whole tour. But if it's just a one-off gig and people are like lazy with preparation, don't even bother. Sometimes you might get a gig where the music is really freaking hard. I mean, really hard. I remember in New York uh, a few years back, I had, I had four different gigs in a week. Okay. And they were super hard music, odd meters everywhere, breaks and stuff and crazy reading. And I mean, it, I, what I did, it was one big band gig also too. I, I had them send me the music two months in advance, okay? And I learned that music for two months. I played it every day in the subway, walking, you know, every chance I got, I would listen to that music. And then when I got home, I would look at the chart again and go over it and try to memorize the music more than depending on reading it. Because at, at some point, you know, the music is so difficult that no matter how good of a reader you are, you can, you're gonna have to rely on your ear and on your gut instinct, because there's so much stuff going on that's impossible, almost impossible to read. Okay, uh, so just to recap that, show up prepared. Don't show up halfway prepared. That's the worst thing you could do. Look like a fool on stage in front of everybody. I mean, you know, so <laughs> uh, number five, Always carry extra parts of your kit in your car if you have a car. Now, this is harder to do if you're in New York, but if you're like most people, I think, in this, in wherever you're driving a car, keep an extra bass drum pedal, keep extra sticks, extra drum keys, extra uh, drum heads, even an extra snare. Even I had a friend of mine, <laughs> he had an extra snare. I said, Man, why do you carry all this stuff in your car all the time? Aren't you afraid of getting robbed? No, man, what if I, one time I forgot to, I forgot my bass drum. He said he left it on the roof of his car as he was loading in. He somehow put it on the roof of his car and then drove off. He forgot to put the bass drum and it fell off, you know, who knows where on the, on the, on the road. And he, he, he got to the gig and he's like, where's the bass drum? <laughs> it would fall, it had fallen off somewhere. And that traumatized him enough for life to keep extra gear in the car and be extra careful when, when packing. Anyway, uh, any little thing like that, carry extra in your car. I used to ha have a toolkit also in my car. Right? If something happened, a drum, I could repair it on the, on the gig. Okay. Okay, this is a really great one. What a very famous, I mean, like one of the most famous drummers on the planet came to my gig one night of the baked potato. <laughs> and ever since we... You know, I, I've admired him for so long. He came and I started rapping with him and stuff, and we get to talking, you know, I've talked for quite a while. And, he, and one of the things he said that always stuck with me, he says, get a bank account that nobody knows about. All right. This is coming from a top player who's made bank, okay, and drumming history. I can't tell you who it is, but... but uh, Get a bank in a foreign country like Switzerland, Germany, wherever, and nobody should know about this bank account, okay? Nobody. I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but if you start to make a lot of money, and uh, sometimes in life, there's people that want to gouge you, and people that want to 
you know, take advantage of, of situations. I just had another friend of mine who, who got a really big gig, man, and, and he trusted a family member to take care of the money. And, and this family member stole half the money. Like, I, I, even uh, a Barry, Barry Manilow, okay? I'm just, I mean, everybody knows the story, Barry Manilow. He, he was on top of the world when then his accountant like ripped him off completely and he went bankrupt, you know? So there's so many things you have to be careful with when it comes to your money. Have a bank account overseas and don't let anybody know about it, all right? That's something you should definitely think about, I think. Number seven, network properly. Now, the biggest thing about networking is that if you have people in your network that become your friends, but they're basically doing nothing for you or with you, don't be afraid to let them go. Cut them loose because you will waste tons of time with these cats. You know, even if you, they're your friends, you, you, this ain't no joke. This is your life, okay? Even if they're your friends, you got to be ready to cut them off. If they're getting in the way, if they're talking about you behind your back, they're trying to steal gigs from you, or if they're, you know, whatever the case may be. A lot of two-faced stuff going on, and, and you should be prepared for that. You know, people who you think are your friends, you have to be prepared for them not being on your side, really, okay? There was one cat especially that was a friend of mine, and, and many people warned me about him. Oh, this guy's a snake, man. This guy's talking about you behind you when he's with other people. He talks about you, but you're friends with him still? What's going on? And I said, hey, man, what do you, what do you mean? He's my friend. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. This can't be true. Can't be true. Can't be true. I didn't want to believe it. It was true, okay? And I found out the hard way later when, when you know, there was a gig involved and it was a giant mess. So don't be afraid to cut those people off. Your network is your life. And I wish I knew this way earlier because, you know, my network was weak in the sense that I, you know, I tend to get attached to people, unfortunately, back then. <laughs> and I wanted to be friends and have friends and it was fun and we'd play together and whatever, you know, go eat and hang out. And, but that, that wasn't a nice experience at all, at all. So don't be afraid to let them go if they're holding you back. Get new friends and keep expanding your network all the time. Even if it feels uncomfortable, you have to get used to having uh, your networking chops up and be able to talk to people in a professional way, okay? I mean, the, the days of sending your demo in the mail are long gone. But if you have, you know, a, a situation online, now it's much, much easier. You can just make the contact, give them your card or whatever, and, and, uh, or your Instagram or whatever, and, and make the contacts. But keep your network moving and alive. Very important. Don't stagnate with the same people all the time, especially if they're not doing anything for you. Okay? Next. Uh, have your gear in order. Okay, I've seen a lot of situations where cats show up with like gear that's totally subpar, totally not professional. You know, what, what on earth are you thinking? You know, you go to all this effort, all this tremendous effort, practice your whole life and dedicate yourself fully to your craft. And then your gear is a total piece of junk. I mean, what is that? That's, that's part of your sound. You know, if you're going to play jazz, get the proper jazz cymbals, even if you have to invest four grand into one cymbal. I mean, guys in New York, they'll do that. They'll fight over a cymbal that costs 4,000, 5,000 bucks. I mean, it's not a joke, you know. Uh, but to get that sound, it's, it's something that's very coveted to have a, a great sound. And, uh, you know, your gear is part of it. Have your gear together. Don't skimp on gear, okay? Now, I'm not saying that the most expensive drum set is going to make you a better drummer. I'm not saying that at all. But have your gear together. Be a pro. Don't show up with broken stuff and, 
uh, stuff that looks like hell. I mean, that's my opinion, okay? So, have your gear together. Number nine, always keep practicing. Never lose touch with practice. There's gonna be times where you might be on tour, okay? You might be playing every night, traveling like crazy, playing every night and, you know, stretching and, well, like I was, like I was on Maynard Ferguson's band, for example, and, uh, you know, there was no time to practice, but I was, I was playing my butt off every night, so it's not like, you know, there was, there was even time or, or I had to save my hands and my ears, you know, that's a different story, but if you, like, you know, got days off and, or you're learning new material, never stop practicing, okay? That's a big mistake, but playing, be, being caught in a rut, playing the same music over and over, I've seen that happen a lot too, especially with guys that have like steady gigs. They get into this rut and they play the same songs for like five years at a bar or whatever, that doesn't exist anymore in this type of gig. <laughs> but I've seen that. And, you know, a year will go by and they're playing the same song. And they're like, what, how come I can't do this? Well, you don't practice, okay? All right, number 10, be clean. Don't be a slob, okay? Always try to be presentable like a pro. Don't go around all dirty and not taking a shower for two days or whatever, especially if you're going to show up to a gig. You know, what I used to do, what I still do, is uh, carry a small grooming kit. Like if I, if I have to uh, go to a gig and it's a, you know, drive for an hour, then you have to set up, you know, and you, you might get sweaty, especially in the summertime where it's hot or in places where it's really hot. And if you don't have a roadie, then you get, get, just get a little grooming kit and cologne and whatever and be able to brush your hair or have some oils and stuff and make sure you're presentable. <laughs> you know, you don't want to go. The worst thing is like in between sets, you good people come up and talk to you and you smell like a cow. You know, I mean, what? It's not good. It's embarrassing because then the next time they're going to say, oh, that guy, the drummer smelled you know, or whatever, you know, that wasn't dressed very nice. I mean, I'm not saying buy expensive clothes, but look decent and present yourself in a professional manner. Okay, these are all mentor things, man. Mentor things that in the, in the old days, ah, get off my lawn, you kids. In the old days, you know, this was part of your uh, upbringing as a player. When you were under someone's wing, they would just tell you this, like nothing, like all the time. I mean, not only 10 things, I'm just doing it for time's sake. But these are things that you get exposed to when you're in the trenches, when you're a drummer, when you're slugging it out, when you're a pro, when you're out there doing it on the scene. Okay, so anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Please check out my lesson site. Only 150 bucks gets you into the full year program. Remember, the most innovative curriculum on the planet online. Okay, folks, peace out.